Good afternoon, and welcome to the regular meeting of the City of Glendale Commission on the Status of Women. Roll call, please. Vice Chair Burns. Commissioner Devine. Here. Commissioner Garcevanian. Uh, student ex officio Jaburian. Present. Commissioner Tashchin. Here. Student ex officio Yagyayan. Chair Miller. Here. Thank you, Ms. Powers. Next item on the agenda, please. At 1A is report regarding the posting of the agenda. The agenda for the February 11, 2013 meeting was posted on the bulletin board outside of City Hall on or before February 8, 2013. At 2, we have introductions and presentations. Um, here to make a presentation on women in engineering and sciences is Michelle Judd, um, PE from the Keck Institute for Space Studies, uh, California Institute of Technology. Uh, Ms. Judd is the managing director of the Keck Institute for Space Study Studies, which is a joint think tank of the Caltech campus and NASA's Jet Pro Propulsion Laboratory. Michelle is licensed in the state of California as a professional engineer and has received awards from NASA, the National Association of Women Business Owners, and the Society of Petroleum Engineers. Um, in 2009, asteroid 185641 was renamed Judd in honor for her work at JPL. And prior to um, finding her dream job in exploring outer space, um, she was the manager of her own consulting business and had a 12-year career at Mobile Oil. So I want to bring her up today. Thank you for joining us. Thank you. What is STEM and why is it important to us? STEM stands for Science, Technology, Engineering, and Management. And the reason it's important to us is because the United States has long enjoyed leadership in these major arenas. But that leadership is uh, being challenged right now because of a few trends I'd like to bring to your attention. As you look at the graphic right here, uh, in a recent a review of international high school math scores, the United States ranked 25th out of 30. And on top of that, um, as we look right now, we know that we don't have enough STEM graduates to fill the STEM jobs that we have here in the United States. Mm -hmm. And so we're backfilling them with people from outside of the country. And what I would say to you is we should start looking at the women in this country and see if we can't help out there. I'm an engineer, so in a room of 25 engineers, on average, there will be about three of us. So let's take a little look about why that is. Now, I, uh, this is a very provocative um, info uh, graph that we use, but I, it says that girls have higher IQs at age seven. I'm not going to quibble who has the higher IQ, the boys or the girls. Let's just all agree we're all smart <laughs> at age seven, and that we take the same math and science classes and that we get great grades in them. So what happens after that? As you can see here, when asked in sixth grade, well, how's your self-esteem level? How confident are you? We get a really great 72%. But by the time we get to 10th grade, it's dropped dramatically to 55%, primarily because girls begin to question their capability when they become more aware of their gender. Now, here's a couple of tests to look at. So when you are asked a boy and a girl to sit down and take a test, they will have the same grades just right off the bat. That's just the way it is. But right here, if you're asked to mark down your gender before taking the test, just by admitting you're a female and making yourself open to that social and cultural bias about whether or not women should do well at tests or not, you can see that the test scores drop dramatically. Also, when asked to assess, how would you do this task, if they're just said, how, how would you do this task, boys and girls would rate themselves at the same uh, average. But if they're told, men are better at this task, but we'd like you to evaluate yourself against it, the women, the girls automatically self-assess themselves lower. This doesn't always, this doesn't even, con this continues not through high school, but also they bring it into college. And so fewer women, 15% of female freshmen, are going into science, technology, engineering, and math. And once they're there, they're even questioning themselves, should I be here? In a recent study of computer science students, one in five are wondering, Am I, is it okay that I'm here? Did I just get lucky? They don't look at 
how their accomplishments got there. They look around, they don't see any other women faculty. They don't see many other women students with them. And so they're constantly questioning, should I be here? So let's look at what the uh, STEM majors are and how women are doing as a percentage. So you can see right up here in the biological scientists, we're doing quite well. We're over 50%, we're graduating people in that particular field. Well, let's go to where I live, which is the engineers, and you can see that there's, quite, there's, a, there's way less women engineers. And this is an opportunity for us to uh, look at as well. Not only are fewer women going into the STEM majors, once we graduate with these STEM undergraduate degrees, fewer of us, whoops, okay, fewer of us actually take jobs in STEM. What we end up doing is we'll take jobs in healthcare. We'll take jobs outside of where our particular field lies. And so what I'd like to talk a little bit about is what does that do when we take jobs outside of our degreed area where we are competent and capable of, of uh, adding to our economy, what happens? So I've already covered with uh, you the disproportionately low share of STEM undergraduate degrees for women and that we're less likely to work in a STEM job. I'm going to cover the next two bullets with some slides just so that you can see it. But the, at the end of the day, what's cited here are three important findings. A lack of female role models, gender stereotyping, and less family-friendly flexibility. So if you want to have a child, if you need to look after your family, there's less flexibility to do that in, some, in STEM jobs. So, some really good news here. In the U.S. workforce, we are 48% of all jobs. Women have 48% of the jobs. But if you look at science, technology, engineering, and math jobs, we only have 24% of those jobs, okay? Now, let's look at this. Once we actually get one of those STEM jobs, we are paid less to do it. We, have, we are paid 86 cents on the dollar. So the same job that a man would do, a woman would be making 86 cents less. Now, for example, say I'm a STEM major. I didn't go into a STEM field. I went into healthcare or some other great field, but just not in the particular area that I studied. What happens? Look over here, and you can see we are paid 33% less if we didn't stay in our field than if we stayed in the STEM job. So again, there's less of us going in, we're getting paid less, and those of us who didn't take the jobs in that particular area are, pay, are paid 33% less. All right, so I'd like to talk a little bit about unconscious bias and how this relates. So here's an example of university professors. They're, what we're trying to do is hire a new university assistant professor. And we have a team of male and females uh, faculty who are going to hire a assistant prof. Now, there are two identical applications. One is merely marked with a female name and one is marked with a male name. And the search committees that had both men and women on it preferred the male candidate two to one. <laughs> Unconscious bias, and we are doing it to ourselves. We, as a society, as a culture, is this a job for a woman to do? Is a man better at this? From a, just an overall view, how people interpret this. And also, not only at the original job hire position, when they go up for tenure here, reservations about the female candidate are raised four times as much to get that tenure track position. Dead same application, okay? So, how do you fight unconscious bias in evaluation? You can use this in many different ways, but I'm talking about the universities here, but you can apply it to many things. Evaluation would be performance evaluations. It could be hiring. It could be promotions, anything like that. So one, set the criteria before you look at any of the applications, which I know you all do. You, you have specific things that you want to accomplish, and you want to see these particular skills and capabilities. Then evaluate all applicants based on those very specific things and stick to the numbers. How many, for us, how many um, publications did they have? How many research proposals have they won? Stick to the numbers, okay? 
And then all the candidates that meet that criteria get on the short list. They, they say, okay, they all meet it, let's look at them as a whole, as a package. Letters of recommendation are another place where unconscious bias takes place. Letters for men are longer letters. They cite references to their curriculum vitae, to their publications, their patents, or their patients apparently, and their colleagues. Letters for women are shorter. They have more references to personal life, and they, they have this kind of faint praise. Let's stam them with faint praise. Oh, it's amazing that she was even able to accomplish that. And she's such a team player, she's like a den mother for the lab. It's fantastic. Well, this doesn't help you get hired. And so really, when evaluating letters from people, and when you're writing letters for women, this is something to pay attention to. Go into detail about accomplishments. Go into detail about the specific innovations that they came up with. I'd also like to talk a little bit about women. I'm going to continue the theme of women in academic science and engineering. And here are some interesting facts. I think we already have talked about women are more likely to experience dis discrimination due to unconscious bias. And that um, Desirable factors for women uh, are not the same as des desirable factors for the position. So, for instance, if I'm a very assertive and single-minded woman, well, I would be viewed very differently than if I were a very assertive and single-minded man. And so these are just some things to think about uh, from the report findings. And here are some key observations. We know that women college students experience isolation. They don't feel, they, they don't think anybody else is thinking like what, what they're thinking. They think they're alone, there's nobody to talk to, and they don't have any faculty that look like them. So this is a very difficult thing, and we've got some key things that we can do to combat that. What's also interesting is that when women faculty take off a, um, a period of time to have a child, normally it's in the beginning portion of their career, and this forever hampers them going forward. Because while men, generally, the study found, they take off more time in the, in the, uh, after, uh, after they've achieved many of their accomplishments, and they already have their track record set. But women, because they want to have children at a certain age and to do it while they're healthy and they have the energy to do it, they need to do it sooner. And then they are penalized because they're always left behind. We can change this, and uh, we can do it by having discussions like we're having today. And I've got a couple of things that you can take with you about taking action. One, we need to encourage women to, when they're in high school. And if they do great in science and math, continue doing it. When we look at student um, undergraduates that are in STEM, women STEM undergraduates, they cite their high school science and math teachers and their parents who encourage them. That's why they chose these fields. If you look at what the boys chose, they chose it because of the video games or the toys or something else. It had nothing to do with encouragement to go forward in science and math. So we've got to keep doing that. We need to continue being role models for and mentors for the women coming through the up through the ranks. When I, I was a woman engineer by myself, the next woman came up, I'm like, pull yourself up. I did it by myself. Why should you get any help? <laughs> Hopefully I've evolved since then. I think I'm pretty good at coaching women now, but back then, I, why would I help you? I had to do it by myself. Come on, you can do it too. And always think about addressing that unconscious bias. Look for places where you can uh, look at those letters of recommendation or when you're doing your evaluations. And finally, uh, I thought I'd leave you with a Caltech example. We try very hard. We've got five different programs for women at Caltech. I'm going to briefly just touch on one of them, Women Mentoring Women. We pat, uh, it started in 2002. We started with 11 graduate students and their postdocs, mentoring them and showing them, it's OK. It, you can do this. Don't be afraid. Don't give up. I was there with you. Come on now. And now we're up to 130 participants for this year. And we have over 500 people, women that have been through that program. So I'd be happy to take any questions that you might have.
Um, I just Ryan? thank you. I just have um, a few thoughts. Are you familiar with the um, AAUW, the Association of uh, American University Women? I personally am not because I'm with a, di a different women's organization with engineers. So, okay. all right. Well, it's uh, it's a we have a local chapter here mm -hmm. which I'm a part of, and every summer they sponsor a STEM college. Oh, that's great. And they great. send girls, middle school girls, to uh, Whittier for a week, and all they study are STEM subjects. And uh, I'm really excited because next week, the 26th or the 23rd, I'm going to be um, actually judging uh, the applicants to go. So I'm, I can't wait to see uh, the, the girls that, uh, uh, that apply for this particular college. It's free to them. Uh, they raise, the AAUW raises money for scholarships, et cetera. And the second thing um, that I'd like to say is that um, Glendale Unified School District is going to um, change, overhaul one of their schools and make it a magnet school and it's going to be a STEM magnet. Oh. So that is amazing, isn't it? I thought it is. Like, I thought That's you'd like really that exciting. <laughs> I'm very excited about that. So Good. good. And Ms. Uh, Mrs. Powers has your information, because mm -hmm. I think you would be a really good speaker at the AAUW for women, so I can get that information from okay. her. Great. Well, thank you for letting me talk a little bit about something I'm very passionate about. I bet you couldn't tell. So, all right. Thank you. We still have um, we still have questions oh. from the rest of the. Oh, right. Diet. Don't leave us so quickly. Okay. No. Uh, I, it's I, so I, I compelling. Like, I, I thought it was like, ah, oh, take your number, call me back later. Okay. <laughs> what you do is really fascinating. I mean, to the point where it's beyond my comprehension. I mean, I think at Kiss you have. Uh, major developments coming up recently with asteroids uh, exactly. and asteroid mining and yes. having an asteroid <laughs> circle around the moon. Mm -hmm. that, that's just so cool. And having an asteroid name after you is pretty cool also. Yes, I, I, they had me on film crying when they gave it to me. I was quite excited. <laughs> but the area is very challenging and it's very difficult mm -hmm. for women. Mm -hmm. um, my understanding is that it's highly underrepresented. W correct. Women are, like you showed, I mean this is very impressive. Uh, very underrepresented in many areas of STEM. Uh, there are, I think, uh, what, more than 50% of the American population is women, uh, and, and the capacity for innovation, we're missing that out. Mm -hmm. And I think less than 24% are in STEM field. Right. And that's, that's sad. Um, what uh, uh, actually, the, the question I have, and you answered it in your in your presentation, was how do you change that? Yeah. I mean, what is it that needs to be changed? Um, over 100 years ago, I think the first woman PhD in, in astronomy, and since then, women are underrepresented in astronomy in many fields in STEM. So, how do you change that? Yeah. So that's a really great question, and, and when you talk about advanced degrees, you know, when you're talking about PhDs, postdocs, faculty, uh, there is a term called the leaky pipeline. There's an entire article and, and whole uh, area of research on that in particular. And what that has to do with is that because, remember there was one uh, item here about family flexible, um, you know, programs is being able to, for instance, um, uh, if you look at health care benefits for, pe for faculty and then you look at them for graduate students and you look at them for postdocs, a lot of times they're not the same. And so they have to make a choice. Do, if I have a child now, do I just give up my career because they won't let me stop? I have to keep going. You know, I, if I... It, if I, if, if I try to have this child, I, I lose the ability to continue in my area because there is no way as a postdoc to keep going. It's either all or nothing. And so by looking specifically at family flexible programs, and this was, this is listed um, uh, in great detail in one of the reports that I cited, uh, how you would go about setting up the ability for women to delay, get an extra year towards tenure, so that they could take that time off. Other things they're looking at is if you're a single mother, uh, you know, the NIH, the National Institute of Health, is now allowing child care uh, and babysitting type uh, expenses to be booked against their, their grants so that women can participate in their meetings and their conferences. 
And so by looking at the NIH by far has, has done some great, great work in this area, and we would all do well to kind of see some of the things they're doing for women to make sure that they can participate in a very meaningful way and have a great relationship raising what I think will be really smart kids for tomorrow. So. Well, you know, when we were setting our calendar for 2013 um, and we were looking at the month of February and the focus on engineering, I, it, I wanted you to be aware that one of our student ex officios, Amy Yegian, who's not here yet, she keeps texting, um, <laughs> she is, uh, was on a plane today going to look at colleges, and she very much didn't want to miss this presentation because she said that to hear you speak was <laughs> like, I sh and she helped us coordinate you as a speaker, so we're very grateful for that. Um, but that being said, there's so much of what you said in your notes and these handouts and your slides that is just so compelling and interesting, and I wonder if she were to take the lead on this and there were other young women at other schools, she's at Glendale Community College, who were interested in getting a copy of your presentation, might they be able to get it through her? Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. This is, uh, this is designed to inform and to, for people to discuss and for people to just be more aware. I mean, the more aware people are, the less unconscious bias will exist. And the more critical mass we build of women that are excited to go into these fields and, incur and are increasingly encouraged to do that, I, I just think it's a win-win for the women. I think it's a win-win for the United States. And well, and what I one of the takeaways that I got from also listening to you, I believe that I write very much about the depth and breadth when I do letters of recommendation for women, but you have made me consciously aware to really focus on the accomplishments, exactly. and I thank you for that. Oh, I, I'm very happy to have done it. So, Any other questions, comments? Do you have a comment? All right, thank you so much for joining us. You're very welcome. It's our pleasure. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Next item on the agenda, please. At three is oral comment. Discussion is limited to items not a part of this agenda. Each speaker is allowed five minutes. The commission may question or respond to the speaker, but there will be no debate or discussion. Staff may refer the matter to the proper department for investigation and report. Thank you. We have three speakers. Our first speaker is Margot Bennett. Thank you. My name is Margot Bennett, and I'm the Executive Director of Women Against Gun Violence. And I'm here today to express our concern about the gun show that is scheduled to play, take place here in Glendale March 1st through 3rd. Women Against Gun Violence grew out of a 1993 collaboration between Anne Rice Lane and feminist Betty Friedan. And together, they agreed that guns and gun violence is a woman's issue, and that with our involvement and the involvement of our families, that we could make a change. And we have. Women Against Gun Violence has been instrumental in passing key local and state legislation, including the ban on junk guns and the requirement in Los Angeles City to report lost or stolen guns. We and gun violence survivors have helped pass uh, statewide legislation requiring ammunition sellers to be licensed and to require a permit to purchase. We and our survivors also reach out to youth, specifically to teach young women to recognize relationship violence when it happens and how to avoid gun violence which frequently results from those types of relationships. Domestic violence assaults involving a firearm are 12 times more likely to result in death. And using a gun in self-defense is no more likely to reduce the chance of being injured. And in fact, abused women are five times more likely to be killed. Why are we speaking here about the gun show? Because although women are active at gun shows, both as vendors and as customers, there is nonetheless frequent expressions of misogyny, both in the products available and the sentiments expressed by the attendees and the sellers. Women are treated as objects of sexual gratification, devalued, 
and in some cases, violence against women is encouraged. I've brought with me copies of photos of items that are sold at a variety of gun shows, and I'd like to give them to you here. But first, I'd like to read just a couple for you. Wife and dog missing, reward for dog. Happiness is lipstick on your dipstick. Honk if you're an orgasm donor. So I'd like to turn these over to you. The gun show on March 1st through 3rd is being held on public property. As members of the Commission on the Status of Women, you with your city's tax dollars are supporting this type of enterprise and this type of behavior. There are many reasons for the Commission to speak out to the City Council against this gun show, beyond the apparent misogyny and the danger to women that guns present. They are serving alcohol, and alcohol and guns do not mix. They may be operating too close to schools and violating state and federal law. Children are admitted free, encouraging attendance by youth in an environment that mixes alcohol with guns. Gun manufacturers have already undermined California's assault weapons ban, and they have found a loophole that is allowing them to sell right here and probably at the gun show that will be coming up, weapons that were used at Sandy Hook, in Aurora, at the shopping mall in Oregon. As the Commission on Status of Women, I believe you have a special obligation to women. Please let the council know that your commission does not support this or any gun show being held on Glendale's public property. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, the next speaker is Deborah Dentler. Good afternoon, commissioners. My name is Deborah Dentler. I'm a longtime resident of the Glen Oaks Canyon area of Glendale. I am an attorney here in Glendale. I've served our community in a number of capacities. I was vice president of our local AAUW branch here in Glendale and was also a judge. Uh, of the uh, Tech Trek project, a really fun experience. <laughs> I taught women's history and American history for nearly a decade at Glendale Community College. I currently sit on our city's uh, Commission on Water and Power. I'm here today to express my concern about Glendale's gun show scheduled to take place March 1st through 3rd in a quiet residential neighborhood surrounded by parks, churches, elementary schools, and across the street from the college where I once taught. A diver diverse cross-section of Glendale's residents, my friends and neighbors, came together in the wake of the Sandy Hook Elementary School shooting to form a new organization, Coalition for a Better Glendale, or CABG. I like to call it Cabbage. <laughs> Cabbage is deeply concerned about the negative image that our city risks gaining across the nation and in uh, the international community as well when the Glendale Gun Show is hosted on public property here. It will, I, I understand, be uh, the last gun show on public property in Los Angeles County, and we're expecting it to be a major media event. Uh, when my son uh, first graduated, uh, when he, my son graduated from elementary school here at Glen Oaks Elementary, he was then allowed to pro, uh, take a class at Glendale College when he was only 13. When he was still a Wilson Middle School student. My middle child was in the college child care center at only age uh, 18 months. My daughter enrolled at the college at age 18. Now, back in those more innocent times, we didn't have to have gun drills or lockdowns, but times have changed and Sandy Hook was a game changer. One of the ways that Sandy Hook has dramatically ch changed uh, across the country is that it led to a spike in gun show attendance, and that's a, a concern of our organization and of mine personally. Um, people are lining up sometimes for miles in the wee hours of the morning, 3 a.m. in Orange County and in Ontario, the most recent gun shows in our area. Uh, we need to open our eyes to what this may mean for Glendale. I think it's reasonable to assume that firearm possession has skyrocketed here in our community since the Sandy Hook school shooting. Yesterday's Glendale News Press front page reported that guns are selling at such a brisk pace here at Glendale. Uh, gun retailers that uh, they can't keep guns in stock. 
So it is very much a concern for this commission as we are probably undergoing a uh, significant spike in uh, gun possession, um, lawful, potentially also unlawful gun possession. Uh, now, I've spoken and so have others uh, at various other city commissions, including park at, parking and transportation at city council numerous times. Your commission's focus is on girls and women and the quality of life our community offers them. So I'm here today to remind you, commissioners, that the pro proliferation of firearms and the easy access to them represented by the gun show that is happening on public property, not private property, something I do not object to, does not enhance the safety of girls and women in our community. Guns and soaring gun sales is a women's issue, legitimately within the concern of this commission. Firearms in the home endanger women and girls more than keep them safe. Statistics show that domestic violence is lethal to women when a firearm is present. Women are twice as likely to be shot and killed by an intimate partner as they are to be murdered by strangers. I'm asking you today, asking this commission to pass a resolution, even if it requires a special meeting. I understand they only meet once a month and resolutions are difficult. Uh, on a timely basis, though, you could uh, hold a special meeting, and I urge you to consider doing so, to pass a resolution, or if not, at least to communicate your concerns as individual commissioners to the City Council, the School Board, and the Glendale College Board of Trustees, so that you can help us avoid the perception across the country that the city of Glendale officially hosts three times a year a gun show. Let's make sure that this is the last gun show on public property in our city. Thank you very much for considering this important issue. Thank you. And our third card is from Alina Dersarkisian. Good evening, Commissioners. Thank you for having me here tonight. Um, I'm here to tell you about the Glendale Downtown Dash, which is sponsored by Glendale Adventist Medical Center and a presenting sponsor by the Glendale News Press. This is the sixth annual Dash, and the event helps raise awareness about stroke and um, the risk factors associated with it. The 5K Run Walk will be held on March 10th. Uh, which is a Sunday, and again, it will help benefit the stroke services at the hospital and education in the community. The reason we do the DASH is because stroke is the third leading cause of death in the United States, and it is the second leading cause of death in the San Fernando Valley. This event offers an atmosphere for business partners, stroke survivors, and participants to show their support for the hospital and stroke awareness in the community. Um, to take a look at the 2012 DASH, nearly 1,700 participants were part of the race. We had over 150 volunteers and over $100,000 was raised to help fight stroke. We had 55 DASH teams that were formed and the best finishing time was 14 minutes and 54 seconds. With the money raised, Glendale Adventist Medical Center helps educate the community through different resources. This year, we will be featuring the Advanced Mobile Stroke Education Unit, which is a big unit and allows patients and anybody in the community to learn through an audio system. Um, we also now have the free stroke medication clinic at the hospital where stroke survivors can come and speak to a healthcare professional or a pharmacist about medication management. Um, in the past, we have featured the Mega Brain Premier Exhibit at the Americana, which is a huge inflatable brain where individuals can walk through and learn about stroke, learn about the brain, and learn about risk factors associated with stroke. We also now have multilingual educational materials available for stroke survivors and patients. So we ask you to register at glendaledowntowndash.com. We encourage you to form teams, um, and we encourage you to invite your friends, families, and coworkers. Uh, we have prizes for the largest teams. We have the School Spirit Run, which encourages local elementary schools, junior high schools, and high schools to participate free of charge. And we also have the Gavin Award, which um, this award came from a young stroke survivor who till today helps raise money for the event. And um, for the team that raises over $5,000, they will receive the Gavin Award. 
And we also have age metal categories for everyone. So again, please go to glendaledowntown-dash.com to register and to learn more about the 5K Run Walk to help benefit stroke services at Glendale Adventist. Thank you. Thank you. Now, do we have any comments? Um, or would we like to respond? Ms. Powers, this is somewhat out of the ordinary in terms of the speakers that we have. So I, I would like to ask you in terms of the previous two speakers that we had, if commissioners wanted to comment or refer back, um, or do we do that now or do we wait till a later point in our comment section? Chair Miller, members of the commission, I'll let um, Mr. Grant step in if I'm incorrect, but I believe you can respond to the speakers. You can ask questions. There will not be a debate or discussion. You can also choose to reserve your comments until council comments if you'd like at your discretion. I do have one comment for Ms. Deborah Dentler. Could I ask her to come back to the podium? Or one question, actually. Thanks. Um, Ms. Hi. Can you just give us a little bit more input? You've gone to all these other commissions and you've asked them to do things and what has been their response? So the good news is that the city council um, is uh, uh, on a good path and we applaud them for that. Um, uh, I'm, my understanding is that city council um, has directed city attorney to uh, prepare a draft local ordinance which would uh, ban the sale of guns and ammunition on city property. So that would effectively include the Civic Auditorium, our largest public facility for such a gun show. So that's the good news. Um, and that, is, that would be an appropriate um, um, ordinance for this commission to weigh in on, like all of the commissions in our city have uh, potentially the opportunity to send a resolution to City Council urging them to uh, adopt the resolution, but the resolution hasn't been introduced yet, so you would be really in sending a message of um, encouragement or um, uh, a message of support for the um, potential proposed ordinance or expressing your concern about the gun show in a general way and hoping that the city does take, um, you know, does expedite uh, it, the process for um, uh, drafting the ordinance and getting in front of council. In terms of timing, I have imperfect information, but when I checked the uh, most recently just before coming over here tonight, um, I was informed that it appears that the ordinance would not come before city council until after the gun show. So the gun show will proceed. The city had an opportunity to cancel the gun show contract for uh, this time around for March, but did not do so. I do have a copy of the contract with me. I'm happy to provide it if you'd be interested. Um, the, the gun show has happened three times a year for many years, and um, it was not canceled. Uh, but uh, the ordinance would potentially uh, then bar such gun shows in the future from public property. We have also asked the school board to send a resolution of concern or an expression of its concern about the gun show, which takes place just 400 feet from the border of College View School, which is our public school for the de developmentally disabled. So there would be a number of things that we, ha uh, the, some of the concerned residents have asked City Council to undertake, and the good news is they're taking steps to do so. So, so far procedurally, City Attorney is drafting an ordinance. It needs to, of course, come before council, get on council's agenda, and then if it's introduced, which I expect it will be since four of the five s sitting council members did uh, vote to direct staff to bring back an ordinance. Then, of course, as you know, there's a delay while mm -hmm. then the ordinance itself comes onto an agenda and is voted on. So that would probably not take place until well after the gun show. But so the second answer to your question is, in the meantime, um, Concerned residents um, are calling for the city to prepare a comprehensive plan ensuring the safety and security of our community um, and, uh, for the March gun show. It begins uh, Friday afternoon at 1 p.m. according to the contract. That's when vendors move in. And that's with substantial thousands of rounds of live ammunition uh, moving into the vendors' tables uh, in the middle of Friday afternoon. And the move-in is from 1 to 6 o'clock p.m. on Friday, and then the gun show happens 8.30 to 7 p.m. Uh, Saturday 
I'm sorry, closing hours 5.30, and Sunday closing is at 7 p.m. Alcohol is sold up until the last hour of the gun show, and children under 14 are admitted free. Um, I might just add that the representative um, photographs and items that um, often characterize gun shows will, um, weren't pr uh, provided to the commission in time to get them up on the um, monitor for home viewers, but um, our organization will make sure that they are posted on online on our blog, and I just wanted to mention it's http backslash backslash coalition for a better glendale.wordpress.com. We've come together, together very quickly in the wake of the Sandy Hook shooting to do something now here, a small reasonable step that we can take in Glendale. So in terms of procedurally what you could do, either as a, a unified commission, which I think would be speaking with the strongest possible voice, would be to just send us an expression of concern by this commission, and that's what we're asking all the relevant boards and commissions to do, and to ensure that Glendale has a good comprehensive security plan in place for the tens of thousands, uh, potentially, of people um, largely outside of Glendale streaming into our community in a quiet residential area. Um, and then secondly, perhaps later, when you have an opportunity to properly agendize it, you could actually adopt a resolution if you wanted to. Those would be my suggestions after that ordinance is introduced in council, if you care to support it. Did that answer your question? It did, and I also think that, um, just to comment on, you also specifically asked us as individuals, given that we know the timing of this gun show and what, what is happening, and um, I've watched you actually present a number of times, and your requests are always very reasonable. Thank you for that, and coming to this commission as well. Um, but you also spoke to us about, as individuals, one of the things that we could do if we're so moved as individual commissioners is speak to our city council, speak to our college board. As you know, our, our city council um, has uh, heard you as well. and. Um, and of course, I don't speak for them, but I know that they found your comments reasonable as well because I watched last week. And we're really glad that they took uh, some reasonable steps to get that ordinance drafted. It's unfortunate that we're going to have the gun show, but I think council will be taking steps with the police chief to ensure a safe uh, gun show. Uh, but um, I think we all have cause for concern watching what's happening at gun shows around the country with mm -hmm. a really truly massive line snaking through uh, parking lots and communities in the Ontario gun show they began lining up at 3 a.m. Thank Why, you so much. thank you and I have to uh, stop you there before we begin a debate right. Um, okay any other comments? Chair Miller, uh, Miller if I may and Commission members um, the City Attorney's Office is working on the ordinance in fact I'm the one who's working on it and it's scheduled to be presented March 5th and as you mentioned certainly as individuals in the community you certainly may address the council, you know, at that time and let them know, you know, how you feel about the ordinance. But as a body and as a commission, uh, the subject matter is outside of, of the subject matter that you normally would consider. Thank you. Thank you for the direction on that. Well, I and, th and, and thank you, um, and thank you to our speakers. And, Okay, next item on the agenda, please. Sure. At four is consent items, and A is approval of the minutes of the regular commission meeting held on January 14, 2013. The approval of the minutes? Yes. Are there any changes that the commission would like to make to the minutes, or is there a motion to approve the minutes as presented? I so move. I'll I'll and we're all in consensus? Thank you very much. Next item on the agenda? At five is the business agenda. A is action items. And one is consideration and discussion of a sponsorship request for the spring 2013 season of Girls on the Run in South Glendale. And at A is a motion providing direction regarding the sponsorship request. Chair Miller, would you like a report? Yes. OK, thank you. Um, as noted in the 2009 through 2014 Commission on the Status of Women's Strategic Plan, Girls on the Run of Los Angeles County, also known as GOTRLA, is a signature program, 
program, excuse me, of the Glendale Commission on the Status of Women. GOTRLA is a fitness and empowerment after school program for girls in third through eighth grades that provides a fun and interactive curriculum, encouraging positive emotional, social, mental, and physical development. The program combines training for a 5K walk run event and pairs it with self esteem enhancing, uplifting workouts. Um, really meant to initiate healthy decision making about difficult issues and encourage open, honest dialogue with trusted adults. This spring's culminating 5K is organized especially for GOTRLA and will be held May 19 at the Rose Bowl in Pasadena. GOTRLA is one of more than 200 councils across North America and collectively they've served over 120,000 girls in 2012. In Glendale, um, this organization really came to fruition in 2008 at Verdugo Woodlands Elementary School. They um, added teams at R.D. White and Lincoln Elementary Schools the next year. And it was really the commission um, strongly encouraging Girls on the Run to expand into South Glendale that started a um, site in 2010 at Edison Elementary School. Since then, they've gone on to Cerritos Elementary as well in 2011. The commission has um, provided annual sponsorships since 2010 to help um, launch the programming in South Glendale for Girls on the Run. In 2012, uh, Girls on the Run served 170 girls in Glendale. They provided financial assistance to 55 girls that was valued at nearly $9,000. For spring 2013, uh, Girls on the Run will be adding a new site at Roosevelt Middle School. This is in part thanks to the strong continued interest from the girls graduating from Pacific Edison and Cerritos Elementary Schools, and Roosevelt is the school that feeds into those schools. And they are at this time requesting a $2,500 team sponsorship for the commission to sponsor a team at Roosevelt Middle School for the spring 2013 season. Um, which starts February 25th. These funds will be used to help cover the gap between the total operating costs and the fees that the girls' families are able to provide. The total program cost is $250 for each girl, um, but the program fee is only $50. So the girls only pay $50, and it's important to note that no girl is turned away for an inability to pay. So if a family expresses that they can't pay that $50 fee, uh, girls on the run will waive it either partially or in full. Um, you have a table in the report provided that outlines the costs associated with running one team. And should the commission choose to become a team sponsor, the commission will be acknowledged countywide for its support with recognition in um, the GOTRLA's e-newsletter, their website, Facebook, and Twitter feed. And at this time, I'd like to invite Elizabeth Sadlin, a board member, to present the benefits of the team sponsorship package and answer any questions that you may have. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. And um, before I start sharing uh, materials about the sponsorships, I also want to send around some cards and pictures that the girls have sent for you um, from our season at Edison. Um, you also have uh, an example of some of the materials that the girls prepared in their um, season last season so that you can get a little bit of a taste of the um, work that they're doing. And hmm? this is the answer, right? Great. Um, so as Ms. Powers um, shared with you, and I think you're um, largely familiar with the program, um, the Girls of the Run is, is a 12-week, twice-a-week program where girls are getting together with volunteer mentor coaches using a detailed curriculum to discover how fantastic they are and use the power of running to be able to build their confidence, their joy, and their healthy habits. Um, we, as a council, really emphasize the beliefs that you, as a commission, bring forward into the community. And hearing, every time I come to visit you, I'm really struck by the alignment of the important themes and issues that you address as 
for adult women and the importance of being able to reach girls at an early age to build that confidence so that our confidence in being um, women engineers doesn't drop off in middle school and our confidence to be able to stand up for ourselves in relationships and be able to be safe is a protective factor for us. So the connections in the work that you do and that we do all the time with your support are very strong and powerful. Um, and as we've heard, in 2012 in Glendale, we did serve 170 girls. We have five sites across the county and now are um, growing into that sixth site and wanted to bring, these are the girls at Edison who specifically wanted to share thanks with you for your support and the cards that are coming around um, as well. Uh, I also brought along this colorful flyer that shows the findings of our evaluation. Each year we do an in-depth evaluation of the program and the impact that it has on the girls. And it's very exciting not only to see and hear the stories of the girls and the families and the coaches and the impact that the program has on them, but also to be able to to be able to demonstrate scientifically and um, with the confidence of the um, detailed analysis, the impact on the girls' physical and emotional confidence and self-esteem that really are gifts that they carry through into their lives going forward. So looking at spring 2013, we know that we're returning to our um, five sites that we've mentioned and adding the Roosevelt Middle School. I would love to be able to invite your consideration of a sponsorship, and I thought it might be a particularly exciting um, opportunity for you to be the sponsors of this new team at Roosevelt in this year that we're um, expanding into that team. So I brought along hot off the presses um, from our uh, sponsorship committee met last night and finalized the sponsorship approach for this year. And so you see the sponsorship benefits that go along with um, the different levels of sponsorship and would love to be able to answer any questions that you have about that and consider how we can work together again this year to be able to bring the program to more girls in Glendale. Um, so maybe I'll pause there for the sponsorship questions Thank you. That you might have. Yeah. Thank you so much, and thank you for bringing these letters of support. They, they have been a joy to read. Do we have any comments from any of the commissioners, questions? I, 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 uh, first, my first comment is to thank you for continuing to your efforts uh, to establish teams in South Glendale, mm. because that's a very important section of our city that is oftentimes uh, ignored. And uh, so I'm so happy that you're going along with what the commission asked you mm -hmm. to do several years ago. Um, I, my question that I wanted to ask you was, what about our logo on the T-shirt? And I see that we're getting to, you're getting too expensive for us. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> it would cost, it would be a $5,000 sponsorship to get our logo on the T-shirt. Can I see that? Yeah. Uh, okay. Can I see that? So what's the question? Ed Lid, that was <laughs> the question was, what about the logo? What about that logo? <laughs> yeah. And well, yeah, hot off the press as I see. Yes, it. indeed. And actually, that was something that, that, that okay. caught my eye as well. And um, we have other board members who were leading and other community volunteers who were part of that sponsorship committee. So I connected with them about that. Uh -huh. And I remember our discussion last year at this yes. time when you had, had gone back and forth of the possibility of supporting two teams, whether it's the same team over two seasons, which would make that annual contract. Contribution. Um, so, if that is, I, you know, a consideration that you would um, want to make, then that's a possibility. I have no idea with, if that might be a possibility. This, is, this isn't the second uh, installation of the uh, installment of the uh, 2,500. No, from last. No, it's a new season, <laughs> new year. <laughs> yeah, I, I do I'm have to work a this, just um, <laughs> request. Good, you're doing great. I um, <laughs> gotta ask. I um. I'm wondering, it's indicated in our report that 3400 is what it costs for a team and you've requested 2500 How do you make up those other funds? Our, our um, board is very dedicated, not only in Glendale, but across the county to making sure that the program is available to girls regardless of income. And so we have a diverse fund development plan that we've implemented with a wide variety of individual fundraising, adult athlete fundraising, where LA Marathon official charity and raise funds through that. We have a strong grants program, and we also have program fees from those girls 
whose families can pay make up about 40% of our revenue. So our, we make up that difference by generating funds through that variety and diverse mix of sources. Great. Yeah. Can I have a brief comment? Yes, Commissioner Tesh. Thank you, Chair. Um, it is a, a signature program, and I've always supported it since my inception with this commission, and I certainly do support it at this time. Um, I, I understand that you requested 2500 uh, and I understand that the balance uh, would be taken care of from outside sources. Um, members of the commission, uh, if, if all of you are in agreement, uh, I'd like to, this time we could make a motion and ask uh, the commission. You can make a motion. And I'd like to make a motion to provide the $2,500 that's been re requested for the sponsorship uh, to Girls on the Run. Do I have a second? Well, I want to, um, I'll second that. Okay, do we want to take well, a... I wanted to ask Elizabeth another question. Okay, if could. okay. discussion, yeah. Um, so is it still, what was the, um, the deal about if we sponsor you $2,500 now, when would this second $2,500 be do that we get us oh, the five thousand okay. for the t-shirts um let's think about this together so okay. if we think about it as one for each season our fall season begins in september oh. and our um, t-shirts are printed um, a couple of weeks into the season so we know how many girls we have and if you wanted to be able to be on the spring and fall t-shirts then we could, if you wanted to make a commitment now, but then have that contribution come in any time before the end of the calendar year, if that helps from your budgeting perspective, um, I think that would be totally fine. This is really a relationship that, of trust and long-time commitment, so that I don't think would be a problem at all. Well, you've, you've gotten us to the place of having a discussion about one teams or two teams again, so I would leave that up to com additional commissioners to comment if they want to. Or we any other comments? Yes, can I ask uh, Mrs. Powers how that would work into our budget? I am working at doesn't matter. You, you currently, um, Commissioner Divine, members of the commission, you do have the funding available. Um, it's completely at your discretion if you'd like to take the motion that's been presented here for the twenty five hundred. Um, or to, um, and there is a motion and a second, so I believe a vote is required. But there can be an additional motion made if that motion dies. It, uh, is it um, possible for us to discuss that second option? Does, did, does anyone have any, I mean, do, am I the only one that, is this a proper time to do it? I, yes. It, it's, it appears that way, yes. Any other comments? Yes. Um, excuse me, I'm sorry, Vice Chair Burns, your mic is not on. It seems to me I would prefer just to do the whole team cost at 3400 I'm not really particularly interested, or I'm not, it doesn't matter to me if we have a logo on a T-shirt. I'd rather fund to 3400 I'm not sure that the logo on the T-shirt is all that important to me. I think it's more important to fund an entire team. Okay, any other comments? I, I do think just in adding to that, I do, you have sources that make up the difference of one team. I think the, the real depth and breadth here is one team or two teams. Yeah, you, there's all different ways of thinking about it, exactly. And so um, the increment then is larger to go to that second team. And make a brief comment. And we're on, uh, you may, if I can just finish. We're also on uh, countrywide listing versus um, just on your website, right? 
What do you mean? I'm sorry. Under country. the 5,000, it says logos listed on T-shirts countrywide. County. Means county. county. Oh, county. Yeah, yeah well, make sure that I'm clear about that. Uh -huh. So we are the council for Los Angeles County. So we are serving um, 800 girls this year and would be um, printing T-shirts for both of those seasons for the girls, the coaches, the family members, mm -hmm. the community members. So it's not the 120,000. Got it. Across the country. So I was sure. hoping my friends in Nebraska and Minnesota <laughs> might, might see the good work we're doing in Glendale. But you had a comment. Um, yes, you, but you do have the balance from other sources, right? You, uh, the total outstanding cost for one team is 3400 The request of sponsorship is 2500 But you do you did say that you do we have. We will raise that, yeah. It's through all the different pieces that come together That's to cover that. That's not an issue in raising the balance. I'm it's assuming. an ongoing process, is, is true for any program like this, absolutely, and, and we do have a mix of ways to do that, yeah. May I ask? Sure. You're, are you a 501c3? Absolutely, yes. And do you have your books open so Absolutely, that... yeah. Anything in particular? Yes, a balance. You're, you say you have money to cover all these things. Ah, so we have approaches for raising the funds in 2013, so we're about to launch the season. And so we raise the funds throughout the year, and we have a budget that identifies for each of those different funding sources how much we will raise. Or and might raise. We'll raise in, based on history and plans that we have in place. And yes, we do have a balance of a three-month balance carrying forward which is a, a prudent um, balance carrying forward for any organization to be able to manage and hold as um, reserve. So we have both a healthy financial status now and a diverse um, and um, established set of ways of raising those funds, but we raise them through the year for the year. We don't enter the year with all the money in hand. I think probably same for you as a commission, right? It's difficult, isn't it? You also talked about in the in the report. It also indicates that we could give out medals or be more yeah. involved in in lots of different ways at this twenty five hundred level, and or it could absolutely depending on where this commission decides to go. It could all those things outlined to us in the report could be at any of these levels. Correct. Absolutely. Okay. Would welcome that. So we and have a motion. The five complimentary five K registrations under the runner level, which also carries over into the five thousand dollar a year level, is an invitation that we always hold to you. And in this case, um, you could be running buddies with the girls um, at no cost to you. Or we could give you can give medals at the end, which is a, or is we the can best give our around. complimentary registration to another girl who, Good. yeah, sure, okay. Um, I'm not sure they would want me as their running buddy, but I'm. I <laughs> I guarantee they, they would. would. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we have a motion on the floor. Are there more comments? I have one yes. more comment before we take a vote um, <coughs> about the um, logo on the T-shirt. Um, yeah, that's. I, I've always been about promoting this commission and getting our name out there so that people know what we're doing. And uh, to see little girls running around with this logo on their shirts, I think, is, is just the cat's meow. It's great. And so I, I just want to encourage um, some of the other commissioners to maybe take that uh, into consideration and, and go for the 2500 now and later. And uh, we'll, so we'll see how the vote goes here. Okay. Understood. Did Madam I Chair, okay. I yes. don't know what the cat's meow is. It's a good thing. It's a good thing. All right. Very we have thing. a motion on the floor. Let's take a vote. What are we voting? Can we hear the motion again? The first. Absolutely. Uh, Chair Miller, members of the com commission, uh, Commissioner Tashin provided a motion. Um, indicating that the commission support the $2,500 sponsorship as is presented and requested in this report. Um, take roll now. Vice Chair Burns? Yes. Commissioner Devine? No, because I'd like to see the other um, suggestion come to. Com Commissioner Tashchin? Yes. Chair Miller? Yes. So the motion as presented passes for the $2,500 spring sponsorship. Now, um, we invite you to come back and request the additional sponsorship from us. Terrific. Oh, no logo. In the fall. And no logo. <laughs> okay. 
All right. Thank you very much. Thank oh, you. And in closing, just to, to let you know, you did talk about ways to be involved, and we also want to make sure not only you, but your audience knows that there are ways to be supportive as coaches and volunteers, and we are looking for a couple of awesome coaches to round out our Lincoln team and our RD White team, two terrific um, established teams with incredible girls, no running experience necessary, and we're doing um, a training this Saturday in Glendale, and if you sign up, men and women welcome, no running experience necessary, guaranteed to get as much as you give. It's really terrific, so thank you. And your spring season starts February when? February 25th. February 25th, and if a young girl is interested in getting in touch with you. Can you say that contact information Absolutely. once more? Yeah, this, the website here at the bottom, gotrlosangeles.org, and registration is available online, and there's a mail-in registration also available there or through our office. Thank you. And I do just want to comment once more that tying you back into one of our speakers from the oral comments, I hope that yeah. you consider putting a team together for the downtown dash, if anything, to walk. Absolutely. And Terrific. we would look at perhaps um, a, di a different fee for we'll your girls as part of training. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you very much. Okay. At Next item on the agenda. At two is consideration and discussion of the proposed uh, Sexual Assault Awareness Month activities, and at A is a motion providing direction regarding the proposed activities. Chair Miller, would you like a brief report? Yes. Sure. Um, members of the Commission, for the upcoming April 2013 Sexual Assault Awareness Month, also known as SAM activity, staff has been working on developing a calendar of events um, to raise awareness in the community about sexual assault awareness and prevention. Um, the first proposed event is requesting a proclamation for Sexual Assault Awareness Month and Denim Day in Glendale from the City Council and Mayor. This um, could happen on Tuesday, March 26 at 6 p.m. Um, and it would be to proclaim April as Sexual Assault Awareness Month and April 24th as Denim Day in Glendale. And the chair would be able to accept the resolution on behalf of the commission, and all commissioners would be able to um, come and receive the proclamation from the mayor as well. Um, the next uh, proposed set of activities are self-defense classes. As in previous years, staff has been working to secure self-defense classes to provide to women and girls in the community at no cost. As in years past, staff is seeking to schedule two self-defense classes and at this time, um, the following dates and locations are being considered. Uh, when the evening of Wednesday, April 10th at Glendale Community College, the evening of Thursday, April 11th at Glendale Community College, and the evening of Wednesday, April 17th at the Glendale Police Department. For the past couple of years, the Commission has been doing one evening class at the Glendale Police Department and one evening class at Glendale Community College. Um, at this time, the availability for the community room the Glenda, at the Glendale Police Department in earlier April is, um, is unavailable due to election activities that are happening in the community room. Um, but for the past couple years, we have been doing one class at the college and one class at the police department, which are open to all women and girls in the community, free for participants. The two classes are um, duplicates. They're not cumulative. It's just an opportunity for women, um, gives them flexibility if they can't make one, or it reinforces the material being learned if they attend both. The classes um, would be provided by longtime commission partner Shield Self-Defense Training, a martial arts-based women's self-defense program founded by Nelson Neo, who's an advocate for women's safety and has been specializing in teaching self-defense and personal safety exclusively for women for the past several years. The cost to provide each two-and-a-half-hour session of self-defense class is $350, which results in a total fiscal impact of $700 um, should the commission choose to provide two classes to the community. And there are no fees for utilizing the um, Glendale Police Department community room or the Student Services Center at Glendale Community College. Um, also for consideration is Denim Day in Glendale. Um, Denim Day originates, goes back over 20 years to 1990 in Italy when a 45-year-old driving instructor raped an 18-year-old girl during her very first driving lesson. The perpetrator was arrested and prosecuted, convicted of rape, and sentenced to jail, 
but the case was appealed to the Italian Supreme Court, and within days the case was overturned, dismissed, and the perpetrator was released. And the chief judge stated that the reason for this uh, was that the victim wore very, very tight jeans. Um, she had to help the, the, the attacker remove them, and by removing the jeans, it was no longer rape but consensual sex. Um, the women in the Italian parliament took a great offense to this. They launched into immediate action, and they protested by wearing jeans to work, and this is how Denim Day started. This um, then came over to the California Senate and Assembly to do the same. It spread to Peace Over Violence, a national organization that does a lot of sexual assault advocacy work here in the United States, and Denim Day was born in April 1999. It's traditionally the last Wednesday of the month. So for the past seven years, the Commission's involvement has been to support Peace Over Violence um, with Denim Day in LA and Glendale and do an awareness and fundraising drive um, within the city of Glendale with the employees here. Over the course of the past five years, the Commission has organized this Denim Day in Glendale fundraiser and as a result has donated approximately $7,000 to Peace Over Violence. Um, and as mentioned before, Denim Day this year does fall on Wednesday, April 24th. Um, the final event uh, for consideration or lack thereof is a possible event with the YWCA of Glendale. For many years, the Commission has partnered with the YWCA of Glendale to host Take Back the Night, a rally that protests against sexual violence and um, specifically violence against women and the fear they encounter when they walk the streets at night. Last year, the Commission and the YWCA of Glendale um, changed this up a bit to do uh, Walk a Mile in Her Shoes. Um, this is an international men's march to stop rape, sexual assault, and gender violence, and this was held last year um, in April. And the YWCA at this time has indicated that it doesn't wish to participate in organizing a Walk a Mile in Her Shoes event this April, but hasn't ruled out holding the event again in the future. Um, at this time, staff is currently exploring the possibility of collaborating on another event with the YWCA Glendale for April. Um, unfortunately, confirmation hasn't been um, received to date whether um, that will be happening or not. Staff will provide additional information as soon as it becomes available. Um, that concludes the report at this time. Um, staff would like to hear any questions, comments? Yes, Commissioner Tashtim. Thank you, Chair. Uh, Ms. Uh, Powers, can you briefly tell me the previous attendance at the uh, self-defense classes? Um, Commissioner Tashtian, members of the commission, the attendance is very well. We try to cap it off at about 90 women, so we do get about 90 RSVPs. Um, from that, it really depends if there's rain or anything like that, but we get about 60 at the lowest and about 80 at the highest for each class. So they're very popular, they're very well attended. Is there a need to add an additional class as opposed to two, um, have three classes? Um, well, there uh, are three, it would be four. Well, uh, is there three right now? Because um, every year we've had two classes, correct? Yes, those are just the dates that are available between the, the rooms that are available and between oh, the um, self-defense instructor schedules. Those are the available dates. So my question is, is there a need to add another class, a third class? Quite honestly, if staff hasn't gotten that feedback um, as far as from the participants. I know it, it, it's something that residents, women, do inquire about throughout the year and staff will put them on um, the email list so that they are aware. Um, I don't believe adding a third class is completely at the discretion of the commission, um, but it seems like two has been sufficient so far. The, the only reason why I ask that is that I've, I've attended, uh, and I'm sure some of the council members, uh, some commission members have attended also, and they've been extremely successful and very popular. Uh, and I, one of the things I thought it was perhaps we need an additional class, um, and that's why I posed that question to you. Is that something that we should look into? Is any of the commission interested? That. Well, that's 
or is that something that we might consider being very aware of as we go into this? We can certainly consider one. If we don't, I didn't hear the data that supported it, but if you have data that supports us voting on that right now, then somebody can make a motion. Otherwise, we could certainly go into the month of April um, being very mindful of that so that we could give feedback for the next year. I, I, what, what's your thoughts? Well, I mean, I, from my understanding is that, like I said, it's, fairly, it's very popular and it's well attended. Uh, and the two times I believe that I went to it, um, basically standing room, let's say. And that's why my inquiry was uh, perhaps there's a need for an additional class and maybe some of the commissioners mm -hmm. will be able to comment on that. Did we turn anybody away last year, Ms. Powers? Um, we would put, if we had about 90 people who would, um, let's say we hit the cap for a particular date, we would let those people know that we're putting them on a wait list and as space opens up, we would fill them in. And for the most part, um, women, we would, we'd ask women to be mindful if they knew that they weren't going to be able to make it to let us know. And we do get a good response. So for women who sign up early on but get um, run into conflicts, they let us know, we put people in the list. Essentially, we don't end up turning uh, women away. And it, it is quite popular. Yes. Um, I, I do know that the police conference room gets very crowded. When we get a big big group there, and we have gotten big groups there, it gets very crowded. Uh, there's, seen, there's a lot more room over at Glendale Community College in the, in the big rooms. That, that's, uh, I think, for sure. Plus, we get the college girls to come at the Glen, at the community college, which is really great. Yeah. Vice Chair Burns. Chair, I agree with uh, Commissioner uh, Tostin and um, Commissioner Devine. I think it would be lovely for 350, an investment of another 350 to have a third class. I, I think it would be very valuable. So all we need is a motion. If, if that's the direction the commission's going, if you want to discuss it more, we can, or we just need a motion. I'll, uh, I'll, I'll make the motion to add an additional class, a third class uh, of self-defense classes uh, to a date, I guess, to be determined uh, by Ms. Abunian once she... Uh, Powers. Well, sorry, Ms. Powers. So I'll make that motion to add additional class. Second. I, just for clarification, and to um, and to accept the the other proposed items as presented. You know, or are we, Ms. Just, Powers? I think we have to take them separately because this came up. It, it, it's, that's reasonable. Okay. Sure. Yeah. So we're just going to vote on this. Um, so I think we need a roll call on this. Absolutely. Vice Chair Burns. Yes. Commissioner Devine. Yes. Commissioner Tashin. Yes. Chair Miller. No. Right. Thank you. The motion has been approved. To yes, accept. motion passes. Most, motion passes for a third class. Okay, can we go back to the other items? So we have the Denim Day, we have the proclamation. Do we need a motion on that or do you? Y yes. Okay, yes. so That's we need a motion for the remaining, uh, unless there are there comments? Do you have comments? A question. Commissioner I have a question, if I may. Uh, what, you mentioned that you are talking about or considering uh, another project with the YW. What would that be? Can you can you give us a hint? <laughs> sure. <laughs> it's a, it, um, Commissioner Devine, members of the commission, it's the, a screening of a film that is related to sexual assault um, and women in the military. Okay. Okay. I had um, I had another idea of how the folks would. Uh, Commission would feel about this, but there's been a lot of talk uh, lately, and there was supposed to be a vote today on the um, Violence Against Women Act in Washington, and I was thinking that maybe we could um, use that. Um, it, it is a major focus for the YWCA nationally, National Board of the YWCA, and if on sexual assault awareness. Uh, evening when we present the program that maybe we could use that as part of our program um, 
It was scheduled to, I um, uh, was wanting uh, uh, Commissioner Toshin to check to see if there's any news on the vote because I, I couldn't find it today. But um, this is an act from 1994. It's been held up in the Senate for, what, two years now, three or four years. Um, it's uh, it's a, a law that gives the federal government um, uh, the right to provide grants to cities uh, for legal assistance and for transitional housing and for law enforcement training. And uh, uh, the YWCA is big. That, that hot, they have a national hotline for domestic violence, and it's they get 22,000 calls a month. And so I think it's real important that uh, maybe we take a stand on this particular act. Um, the bill would authorize $659 million to over a five years uh, program. Uh, so I thought maybe we could have a joint event or even the commission, if you can't, if the YWCA doesn't, isn't interested in collaborating on Sexual Assault Awareness Month, that maybe the commission could do a, an event like we did for the Commission on the Status of Women and Girls, the State Commission, and uh, perhaps have a petition and have um, people, women, come and, and look over this act and, uh, and make up their minds that they want to support it, and perhaps we could be um, instrumental in in changing this this stalemate, or at least raising awareness of this this very important act, I think. So that was just a, a consideration that I had. At least something else doesn't work. Out. What bill is that? What bill number? Uh, that I don't know. It's just it's I don't I don't know if it has. I'm sure it has a number, but it's called VAWA. That's the the what they they use. It's called the Violence Against Women Act, created in 1994. Well, I think if you, Commissioner Devine, I think that that is a very reasonable, timely, and worthwhile request that you have put forth. I think where we're at, from what I gather on this fourth piece with the YWCA, is we're, we had hoped that an answer would come down by today, so that we, as a commission, could decide on this and do our own planning. And I think for the purposes of of where we might want to go for voting on the items that have been presented is to take those items and to also be mindful of this fourth piece, which we're not voting on, and then at that point to take into consideration the comments that you have as well as the history that you've, you've had on this commission with the key topic being sexual awareness and to include that. It, it, does that seem reasonable sure. to every? I, I think we should. For the purposes, and it's only because everything's a little bit fluid with the YWCA, and hopefully because that's been said six times on live television, we would get an answer by tomorrow. No, I'm kidding. Or sometime this week, right? Good thing they're my friends there, and I can joke like that. All right. With that being said, let's get a, let's get a um, motion, if we can, on the other items. Is that fair and reasonable? Okay. I need somebody to make a motion. Well, then let me let me make the motion. We're, we're looking at alternative number one, correct, Ms. McCarthy? As presented, yes. Uh, so I'll make a motion that the commission approve the proclamation for Sam and Denim Day in Glendale, the self-defense classes, and a Denim Day fundraiser for peace over violence. Second. And are we unanimous? Okay, we don't need a roll call motion as passed, we're unanimous. Thank you. And just in closing, we are very mindful of the fact that we always do a fourth event with the YWCA and we are very hopeful and um, that we are going in that direction because they are an excellent community collaborator for us. They are the front line of the people that deal with the sexual assault and the theme we do see ourselves as very much the advocates behind supporting them, and we hope that we go in that direction. When that time comes, we'll circle back with you, Commissioner Devine, to include some of your comments that you brought up as well. Thank you. Okay, next item. At three is the update regarding the ninth annual Jewels of Glendale fundraising uh, luncheon, and at A is motion providing direction regarding the ninth annual Jewels of Glendale fundraising luncheon. 
Uh, Chair Miller, members of the Commission, this item, there, there's nothing new to report at this time on the Jules Luncheon other than the nomination deadline has been extended to February 22nd for the Jewel and Gem Awards. This report is simply being, it will routinely be on the agenda to provide any updates and provide the Commission with an opportunity to make any um, changes, provide any direction to staff. Um, should you so desire. Two comments on that, Ms. Powers, if you could just clarify. In, in our report, it indicates the assignments of who's doing what. It does have me identified with the speaker talent and awards. And I just wanted, is that just assumed because Vice Chair Burns is, she's not listed here, but she's the chair of this event. And I just want to be clear that her name is right next to mine. It's right? above at the top. It's above? Okay. So it's assumed that she'll be right in there on that particular assignment as we're all identified. Yes, Chair okay. Miller, members of the commission, um, for that specific, um, the Jules Chair, um, who is Vice Chair Burns, will be working with each commissioner on their assigned um, uh, topic. And specifically for the speaker talent and awards, it would be you, uh, Chair Miller, and um, Vice Chair Burns making those recommendations for Great. Jules nominees. I just wanted to make sure that it wasn't just me alone. Yes. Um, the, I just want to announce the nomination website again, if I may. Absolutely. www.ci.glendale.ca.us slash women. Again, that's www.ci.glendale.ca dot us backslash women and just be mindful of the fact that we do have that nominations are still being accepted that the gym award which goes to a student does have an amount associated with it and that we encourage any person to nominate someone that would be worthy of receiving one of these awards and we look forward to seeing them are there any other comments and what's the action that you need is simply an update yeah, no action Okay, we'd like to welcome with us, before we move on, we'd like to welcome our student ex officio, Amy Yagian, and to thank her, we did publicly thank you and acknowledge you for all the great work you did on our wonderful speaker. And I assigned a, a little task to you that I'll tell you about after. <laughs> all right, um, next item on the agenda. At four's consideration regarding changing the date of the regularly scheduled March meeting of the Commission on the Status of Women, and at A is a motion selecting a date for the March meeting of the Commission on the Status of Women. Um, Chair Miller, members of the Commission, there's no uh, physical report attached to it. This has simply been placed on the agenda at this time um, at the request of a member of the Commission to consider changing the date of the regularly scheduled meeting. This would entail canceling the regular meeting and setting a date for a special meeting in March should the Commission uh, support changing the date. Great. So what does the Commission think? Madam Chair, what is the, uh, what is the choice? The, other than the regular date? The, the discussion before us is to change the regularly scheduled March date to a different date. And For example, one of the suggestions made was March 19th, which I believe, eight, I'm sorry, 18th. 18th, is, 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 a is that a Monday? Yes. And w again, that would be at the consideration that the room is available. There are a number of other commissions and meetings, and we would have to take that into con consideration. Question: yes. uh, Why are why are we changing it? That seems to be uh, kind of obscure. Go ahead. Why does it need to be changed? I just asking. I put a request forward. Um, I put a request forward to uh, change the meeting. I will be out of this town. I then went to my vice chair and uh, and offered to pass the gavel so that the meeting could continue and she um, and I asked her what her um, choice was on the matter and she indicated that she would prefer I bring this to the agenda for a vote. So, it's, so that's how it came about. So what, when, what date is it that we're changing? 
March. March, th March 18th. March 18th, Monday, 5.30 p.m. is the suggested time. Madam Chair, we also might run a risk if we left it that there would only be two of us. I think those were the concerns. When I gave the option for passing the gavel, which I'm free to have that discussion with the vice chair and her preference, um, I think the question that came up was the quorum um, issue. But again, that would be up to the entire commission to consider and to vote on going forward. I, I just, if I can make another, I'll be out of out of the country that month, so. Uh, that month you have the okay the chance that you may not have a quorum then too so take a date hmm. oh you are you saying 18th also yeah. 17th I leave that up too <laughs> was this the so I think we know we would not have a quorum. I think based on, we would know we would we um, would not have a quorum for the March. What would that be? Eleventh, twelfth? No, I would be here for that one. Oh, okay, that's good to know. So what it actually comes down is the March eleventh meeting. So either way, there would be it. Okay. So then it really comes down to what the what pleases the commission. Well, if I might, if the chair isn't going to be here, I think we should change the meeting. So I move that we change the meeting to a date selected by uh, Mrs. Powers, the availability of the room. Well, the only option we have is, is March 18th, correct? In keeping with uh, time and day of the week that is similar to the Commission, which is just feedback that staff has received in the past individually from commissioners that changing it to, for example, a Wednesday at 11 a.m. or a Friday morning is, um, is a little more inconvenient, whereas Monday, 5.30 p.m. Um, seems to work better since it's more, it's closer to the regularly scheduled time. Also, I think knowing who would be here on various dates and running the risk either way with the quorum, I think it's important when you do look, if you do look for a different date, do we, um, that you take into consideration um, the schedule of Commissioner Tashtian and his, because he's in court when well, he can be available. Well, there is, there is a motion by Commissioner Devine to change the meeting to a later date. I'm assuming that later date is, is the March 18th date. That's what I'm assuming, even though that, that date wasn't specifically mentioned. Because we don't know, that's right. But because we don't know the room and um, all of those other things, we yeah. don't know that that would be the date. Are, are the only problem I have, as, as you well know, is that um, I, it's very difficult for me to make it, as you indicated, during the day and specifically in the morning or, or in the early afternoons. Uh, that would be something that, that uh, you, know, you should consider. But March 18th, if that's available um, in the af late in the afternoon, is something that I would be able to make. Chair Miller and Commission members, if I may, the, the actual motion, if it could be amended, would be to cancel your regular meeting of March 11th and set it a special meeting to another date. So can I have a motion stating, do we need to, to actually have somebody make that motion stating just that? Okay, can someone make a motion to cancel the regularly scheduled meeting and schedule a special meeting? Well, I'll make the motion to cancel the regularly scheduled meeting in March and, and set a special meeting. Second. And do we have consensus? Okay. Thank you, Ms. Powers, on that. It looks like motion is approved, and if yes. you could let us know. What's happening? Absolutely. Next item on the agenda. At B, um, it's still under business agenda. B is reports information only, and at one is commission on the status of women's 20, 2012, 2013 master calendar of events. And um, uh, we have, it's the regularly uh, appearing calendar. If there are any additions, revisions, deletions, that That's can, um, Make note of those now. If not, is on. our calendar posted publicly? It's not, but it can be. 
I think it would be great if you could post it publicly so that as we, we've had such a great response from, from everyone getting involved and providing us with speakers that we might not have, have connected with. If, if you were able to um, post that and then we were to continue to ask people um, to give us names of different people. Um, with our next topic being determination rising from poverty in America. Okay, next item on the agenda. So at two is update regarding the Glendale Unified School District's 2013 Yellow Ribbon Week, Hands, or words, hands and Words Are Not for Hurting project. Uh, may I provide a brief report, Chairman? Yes. Oh, thank you. At the November 2012 meeting, the Commission allocated $4,000 for materials to the Glendale Unified School District for the implementation of the Hands and Words project as part of the curriculum for the Yellow Ribbon Week anti-violence activities in January of 2013. 100% of the allocated amount um, was spent on the following. 17,000 stickers, 2,600 wristbands, 5,000 informational brochures in English, and 1,500 informational brochures in Spanish. The bracelets were ordered for the first time um, to replace the pins. They were very popular with the high school students. They would traditionally get um, about one inch buttons and this year they received those purple flexible um, wristbands and the stickers were distributed to the elementary and middle school students. The brochures were distributed at each school site and made available at the school district's main office counters. The Hands and Words project did provide a discounted shipping rate so that the order requested by the school district would not have to be reduced in size and additionally the banners that were ordered four years ago were once again used at the schools. Of all the schools, they all, all the schools voluntarily participated in the Hands and Words project. Um, and Scott An Anderley, Director of Student Support Services, is here to share some photos and additional information about Yellow Ribbon Week. So thank you for being with us tonight. Thanks for your patience. Good evening, Commissioners. Uh, my name is Scott Anderley. I'm with the Glendale Unified School District Office of Student Support Services. And the Glendale Unified School District would like to thank the Commission on the Status of Women for partnering with the Hands and Words Are Not for Hurting project to bring this message to the students of the Glendale Unified School District. I promise not to use my hands or words to harm myself or others. This pledge was taken along with the brochures and the stickers and the wristbands by thousands of students in the Glendale Unified School District during Yellow Ribbon Week. And I have personally been working with Ann Kelly, the director of the Hands and Words Are Not For Hurting Project, for the last 10 years. But it is not until the Commission on the Status of Women partnered with that project were we able to bring their message to the students of Glendale Unified School District on a large scale. And we thank you very much for your help. I, have, pictures I do you. have a couple pictures. The stickers, as was mentioned, were distributed to all the elementary school students and the middle school students. And I just wanted to mention, I happened to be at Toll Middle School the day they were distributing the stickers. And I went into a classroom, and when I walked in there, on every desk was a sticker and I talked to the teacher and I said what's the plan for the stickers he says we're gonna take the pledge we're all gonna put the stickers on together and then the students are gonna go home and tell their parents a little bit about the stickers and what they mean and a little bit about the pledge and so if that's happening in just a random classroom that I happen to walk into you know that's just exciting because I believe it's happening in all of the classrooms throughout the districts. Along with the, uh, there's other projects that go along with the uh, brochures and the stickers and the wristlets, and that is the uh, making of the hand posters. They um, put their hands in paint and put them on the posters and um, display the, the posters throughout the school. And that, that's a picture of Rosemont Middle School where they were having a large uh, poster making project and the last thing that I would like to say tonight is is that 
um, all of the materials were distributed and in demand. In fact, um, the wristlets were so popular that during the last day of Yellow Ribbon Week, the superintendent's office called down to my office and wanted some more wristlets to show during a presentation uh, that he was having and we were sorry to inform the superintendent that we were out of wristlets that they had been distributed to all the students and so uh, they were very popular and again we appreciate all of your help. Yes, Commissioner Devine. And what a treat it was to have Ann Kelly actually come and speak to the students. Was it last year? Yes, last year last Ann year. Kelly that came was... from Salem, Oregon down with her husband Bob and uh, they presented at um, eight elementary schools, two middle schools and at Glendale High School and they received a um, commendation from the Glendale uh, City Council last year. So that was quite exciting to have them down here in person again to do larger uh, presentations but you know this is a good message we've been doing it for 10 years we would certainly like to continue to do it here well uh, Chair Devon, you, you certainly have our support because I'm when I see this it, it just it's very joyful for me uh, and I thank you for coming it was my pleasure thanks for having me thank you thank very you. much Scott Thanks for taking the time to tell us about this. And it's in all 29 of the schools. That is fantastic. All right, next item, please. At three, excuse me, at three is an update regarding the Commission on the Status of Women's Sponsorship to the Glendale YWCA for Women Veterans. Give me one second here. Okay. Um, Chair Miller, can I provide a brief report? Yes, please. Thank you. Um, commissioners, at the last meeting, the Commission approved a sponsorship request submitted by the YWCA of Glendale to help support and enhance a three-day workshop they are hosting for women veterans. The Leading with Resiliency and Grace workshops, which are being coordinated by Sunergos, will take place at the YWCA facility from February 27th through March 1st. The sponsorship that was approved by the Commission uh, consisted of two parts, a reception at the Americana at Brand honoring the women veterans participating in these workshops and also providing them with tickets to see Menopause the Musical at the Alex Theater, both on the evening of February 27. The cost approved for the reception was $875 and the cost approved for the tickets to the musical was $1,560, totaling $2,435. Recently, staff was informed that Sunergos had encountered a conflict at the timing of the reception at the Americana and indicated that the participants would be unable to attend the, re the reception. And so as a result, the reception has been canceled, but the participants will still attend the musical. Um, as mentioned at the last meeting, the workshop participants will receive a CD of the songs in the production. They will have the opportunity to attend a meet and greet with the cast after the show. The commission will be recognized at the production and um, the commission will have the opportunity to address the group as well. So the total cost that was approved at the last meeting was um, $2,435 and so based on cancellation of the reception, at this point the total fiscal impact related to this item is now only the $1,560. So that concludes my report. Great. Any comments? Okay. Um, before we move into the next section, which is to go into the comments, I do want to just circle back and ask our attor the attorney, um, could, could you turn your name around so that I could? Grant. Grant. Hi. Hi. Nice to, um, thank you for joining us. Um, I do want to just circle back before we go into the commissioner comments, just to make sure that this is understood by our commission and understood by the viewing public. Um, we were asked, we had oral comments today and we had oral comments on a compelling subject, as you know, the gun show. Our city council has already spoken on that and we know that we're not the city council but we are just a commission, an, a part of the um, city council. It, my question goes, is that why you indicated at this time it's out of our purview? And what the second question that goes with that, which I really want to understand is, is 
when a group comes to us and asks us other than individuals to have a special meeting which at this time we would not be able to based on on the time but when a group asks that of us and they ask us ask us to take it under special consideration if the council has not ruled on it because we take our, our authority from them if they have not ruled on it we would be able to come with recommendations to them correct well certainly you can come to recommendations with the council as long as it's within the you know, subject matter or jurisdiction of of your commission and in, in the municipal code it sets forth you know the different um, different topics and subjects which you uh, typically consider for this commission and the only thing that I was mentioning that was for the topic of uh, firearms and gun shows uh, those matters really um, are outside the, you know the subjects that you would ordinarily consider um, certainly as individuals you can go up as a resident and and as a concerned citizen you can address the council on that but as a body since it's typically not a subject that's been given in the uh, ordinance creating this commission, um, the commission would be acting outside its really its authority and its power. Thank you for clarifying. Even if it was on the issue of advocacy. Correct. Okay. All right. Thank you for clarifying. I just wanted to be sure that we addressed our public that came before us and that we stayed within the lines of authority that we are governed by under our council thank you with that said we are going to move into um, our comments um, by the different commissioners if we would start over here with our student ex officio Amy Yagin um, I just like to say that I'm very upset that I um, had to miss Ms. Judd's presentation I wish I could have seen it but I will look um, online to see if I can find She's sending you her presentation. Perfect. That's the thing I was, um, and you'll be. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. Um, and that's it. Welcome. We Thank hope you. your college search was successful. Thank you. And um, our student, Cherubian. Um, actually, first off, I was going to say I'm very supportive of the uh, hands and words for an are not for hurting because I did take the pledge and it was very successful at Glendale High. And then second of all, um, I was reading the other day in Time Magazine about um, gun control, and California has the highest gun control laws, but it's still not enough. So I do agree with um, Ms. Bennett that it is our obligation that we need to take a little more deeper look into it. And I am excited, like Amy, for um, Ms. Judd's presentation. I actually was very fascinated because there are a lot of girls at Glendale High who are trying to go into the science field, and there are some obstacles in the way. So, great, Commissioner Devine. Um, I want to start out first by um, thanking the City Council for unanimously supporting our request for a letter in support of SB Senate Bill 59, uh, which would change the language in an archaic law. Uh, of, concerning the conviction uh, of a rapist and uh, uh, there was no question uh, about their support and I, I want to thank them very very much uh, don't forget menopause the musical get your tickets at the Alex it's uh, going to be there on February 26th and 27th and don't forget to mention when you buy the tickets mm -hmm. GYWCA Glendale YWCA and then 10% of your ticket price will go towards the Y programs for domestic violence. I want to congratulate the Glendale Education uh, Foundation, uh, Susan Hunt, a former commissioner uh, with us, and uh, Laurel Patrick, president, presented a wonderful evening uh, of fundraising, which is going to the arts and uh, their music and dance programs. I want to announce uh, Neighborhood Legal Services has a um, is providing free information or um, problems with health insurance. So if anybody out there has a problem, public or private insurance, you can give them a call and they'll talk to you about affordable health care, medical treatment prescriptions, the, uh, the right health care plan, all sorts of information. And the number to call is 
3202. I know we're going to have a lot of questions about health care in the future, so uh, be sure that you realize or that you remember that Neighborhood Legal Services is there to help you. Uh, I want to remind everybody that Bras for a Cause, sponsored by Seroptimus International of Glendale, is coming up on April the 20th. Uh, tickets are available, and also if you'd like to decorate a bra, you know, this is a, a, um, a fundraiser uh, which provides sometimes $10,000 to each of our local hospitals for breast cancer programs. So it's really important that we get support from the community. That's why I'm wearing this little bra pin, and if you'd like one of these, these are available from Seroptimus. We have them in pink, white, and gunmetal. But anyway, if you're interested in Bras for Cause, it's a wonderful evening at the Hilton this year on, as I said, the 20th of April. The number to call is 818, this is for tickets, or a bra, to submit 245-6552 and uh, ask for CAS. And that's that. And um, we're, some of us are wearing red tonight because it's Go Red for Women, uh, health, uh, Heart Health Awareness Month. And uh, I just suggest to everybody out there, wear red this month. And when someone says, oh, you look gorgeous in red, you just tell them this is for heart health awareness. Get your physicals. Do your exercise, eat right, uh, stop smoking, and do all the right things. Women are um, uh, one of the heart, heart attacks and heart disease, one of the major um, killers, chronic diseases for women. And lastly, uh, I put this before the commission. Uh, I have, uh, have been thinking about this for some time, and I would like to suggest that, the, that we request that the name of this commission be changed to the Commission on the Status of Women and Girls. Tonight you saw Girls on the Run come in. We have fabulous programs in our city for girls. And this would also put us into um, uh, consistency with the State Commission, which is now the State Commission on the Status of Women and Girls, and the federal program, the one that uh, President Obama, the council, is on uh, is the Council for Women and Girls. And so um, if, if any, I'd like to have this agendized and perhaps we can talk about it. Um, if anyone would like to, um, I guess, uh, I guess we need one other commissioner to. Uh, does she need to make a motion to agendize that for the future or just request that? So it's a request for a future agenda item. If anyone um, would like to support that, just for discussion. Okay. So we will look at that for future um, consideration, but not the March meeting, since you won't be here. Um, okay, Commissioner Tashian. Commissioner Tashian. Yes, thank you. Um, first, um, I believe a third self-defense class was needed. I think it's important, uh, and I think that it's money well spent. So I'd like to thank the commissioners in approving the third self-defense class. Uh, I'd also like to thank uh, Michelle Judd, and she's no longer here, but I think her presentation was you know, very well done, very informative. She's well prepared, and I was very impressed by her. Um, hopefully, it, it will encourage women to go into the STEM field. I think it's an important area, and women are totally underrepresented in that field. Um, I'd like to um, briefly discuss, actually I'd like to second uh, Commissioner Devine's request to put uh, on the agenda, I don't know if, next, if it's not the next meeting, the following meeting, her request for a possible um, a name change. Uh, I'm tentatively in support of it right now, however, I would request a detailed study and report before I make a definitive decision, but I'd like that agenda is at, at our next or following and the April meeting, I believe, is, is uh, perhaps we could get it on that agenda. That's something I would be interested in. Thank you. Vice Chair Burns? Well, today we cut a ribbon at the Live Well Senior Program Lounge. It was a nice party. Congratulations. And the seniors now have a lovely lounge to go to at a dentist. Uh, Tuesday, February 12th, there's a stress management of being a working parent. And it's uh, given in the Perkins room.
called a balancing act. I want to save the date for the uh, luncheon, and that would be May the 9th for the, the Joel's luncheon. And the mayor's prayer breakfast is coming up on the 21st of March. Then the City of Glendale Human Relations Committee is having a bake sale Thursday, September 14th from 8 to 10 in the Perkins Room. And then the Founders Guild at the Glendale Adventist Medical Center is holding a luncheon, which will be... Valentine's Day. Thank you. And it'll be at 1130 over in the main auditorium. Very, very important. There's a love food drive coming up for the Salvation Army Food Pantry. Monday, February 11th through Thursday, 14. You bring your food donations to the fire or the police station. And Friday, February the 15th, they will go to uh, the Oakmont Country Club. And uh, let me see, the Glendale Elks Club. The Salvation Army is real is empty and they really their pantry really does need restocking I'm sorry to do this but I want to let people know that we've got a very active League of Women Voters and they had an extremely interesting meeting on the 9th of February it was initiative and referendum study extremely interesting and I would also like to ask the city attorney I received from Ms. Pa Mrs. Powers, a two-page list of what commissioners or employees of the city could do or could not do with regard to the, in um, yes. And it seems to me that we should truly hold that up to us because so far it's been rather interesting some of the things that have been going on with and it doesn't seem that we're, I think we're going too far over in some of the things that perhaps we shouldn't be doing. Did everybody get that missive that told us what we could and could not do? I, uh, I believe so, and I think that was a memo that was distributed. It was a citywide. It was. It was a citywide email that was distributed by City Attorney Mike Garcia. Yes, it indeed to. was. It was eye-opening to me because I just figured anybody in the, working in the city or part of the commissions could do what they wished. It's really tightly <laughs> controlled, correct? Correct. Then the last thing I think, oh no, I wanted to thank the City Council for the letter of support for um, the 59 bill. Uh, and we also have a domestic violence checkup coming up. The United States Task Force recommends that doctors screen women for abuse. This is a terrific article, and we probably would, every one of us would, would be happy to read it. And then we're looking at AB 156. It's a Holden bill. And it expands wiretapping to include human trafficking. And this is another article that I thought this commission would find extremely interesting. So I thank you. Thank you for your comments. And for, um, I just, on behalf of the Commission on the Status of Women Glendale, it gives us great thanks to, first off, to, to give a big thank you to Glendale Memorial Hospital. Glendale Memorial Hospital provided us with a grant for $7,500. We were one of their nine community grant recipients for Camp Rosie. You know how important Camp Rosie is to many underprivileged girls that wouldn't otherwise get all of this specific training in finance and nutrition and health and self-awareness and body image. So these funds will be greatly utilized this year as they have been in the past, but, but we want to again give a special nod and recognition to Glendale Memorial Hospital for truly supporting the efforts of this commission. Thank you. 
I also want to give a big thank you to City Council for taking into consideration our, our request for SB 59. I also want to identify the Glendale Latino Association Awards um, and to give a big congratulation to our winners. Our Woman of the Year is Robin Goldsworthy of the CV Weekly. Our Man of the Year is Chief Police Ron DePompa. And our Business of the Year is Glendale Memorial Hospital. That luncheon takes place on February 28th. And if you want to find out more about the Glendale Latino Association, you can just put that right in your search engine, Glendale Latino Association, and it'll pop up. I also know that they advertise in the news press throughout most of the months of, uh, and the CV Weekly, most of the month of February, uh, their event. So follow up with them. It's a great event. Um, please make sure you put in your nominations, again, for, our, for the awards and for our luncheon. And also, I do want to just um, put a, um, make a statement about our ribbon cutting today. It was with great, great pride that we opened our Live Well Lounge. Our program started in 2011, but we really had to build some depth and breadth behind this program before we could put the means and the finances behind giving a designated lounge to our very important senior patients that come to our hospital that or their families that might have questions beyond their clinical care, whether that be for Medicare questions, whether that be for insurance consultations, or things along those lines. Well, that lounge, which opened about six months ago, and I wanted to wait until it was perfect, until we had our ribbon cutting, today was that day. We had over 70 community members. Um, we had a number of legislators. We had great community members that we partner with every day from Shoal Canyon Estates to Leisure Glen to Casa de Glendale to the YWCA to Massage MV. It was just a great day. And I want to thank everybody who participated and joined in on that and made sure that going to work every day is a, is a joy in serving the senior population in Glendale. With that, um, I would ask that I would thank you all for your thoughts, and I would ask that we have, I'm requesting a motion for adjournment. Motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Uh, um, do I have a second? Second. All right, and I'm sure we're all in consensus. Okay. Meeting is adjourned at 7.33 p.m. Thank you and good night.